Are you guys ready? It's time to kick off our 2021 lawn season. We're going to be starting with a soil test. Don't go away. All right, team. It's Russ. Lawn Journeys. Welcome back. We have a new season about to get started. We've been under snow here in the Northeast. Yeah, definitely a colder winter than last, but let's get right down to it. We're going to grab our soil sample, and I highly suggest if you guys are new to DIY lawn care, you get a soil sample kit. I'm going to provide the information where you can get one. You can use the links I've provided. You can go on Amazon. You can go to um, use my Yard Mastery um, link. You can go there direct. I don't really care how you go, um, but get yourself a kit. Okay, so this video is going to cover everything. It's going to cover the sample collection. It's going to cover uh, homogenizing um, multiple samples, letting it dry. It's going to cover... Um, pre-filling the sample container with the uh, preservative that comes with it, uh, mailing it back. We're going to do the results here in the same video, and then I'm going to talk to you guys about my soil correction that I'm going to do this spring. So I highly recommend that you get yourself a sample tool. Um, this tool, I forget how much I paid for it, maybe 15 bucks on Amazon, I can't remember. Um, and I, like I said, I'll link to it below, but it definitely makes things faster. You just stick it... Um, you go in, you come out with your sample, remove the thatch, remove um, anything deeper that you went because you just want to collect the three to four inches. I'm going to put it in this cup. I'm going to be taking two samples from my front lawn, two samples from my rear lawn, probably two samples or one sample from each side of my house. Um, I will let it dry because we have had a lot of snow, so my ground is rather wet right now. Um, I want the sample to dry out because I want to remove the moisture and then I'm going to crush it, I'm going to homogenize it, and then I'm going to put it in the sample container. So don't go anywhere, let's get out there and get it done. Really simple. First sample, rear yard. Just basically put it on the turf, press. Pull up a sample. Let's take a closer look. So as you can see, I have my, my turf. I have my thatch, which I don't have much, because if you guys go um, follow the video, um, look at those roots. Look how deep those roots go. So I push that sample back out with my thumb, and I'm going to take this plug. Looks very similar to if I was using an aerator. I have very clay, clayey soil here in New Jersey, in South Jersey. So I'm going to remove any organic matter. And I see I still have some roots in there. That's a good sign. I had a good good season last year with the bio stems. So I'm going to put that in my cup. Um, I could plug this back in, but I don't think I'm going to find a spot now. We've collected our samples. Um, I have them in this cup. I'm going to take them into my garage and put them in a, uh, a box and let them dry out. All right, team. Um, let's continue this uh, soil test. Um, I have collected my samples. Okay, they're um, in this container. Um, you guys saw me draw the samples a few minutes ago. It was actually two days ago. Um, what I'm using this year is this uh, Yard Mastery um, soil nutrient test. Um, it was marketed by um, Yard Mastery, but it's in conjunction with my soil. And the primary constituents that I'm testing for that come back with this kit, I'm gonna read it off of here and I'll share it with you guys, but it's pH, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. So we have our NPK, okay? And then we have our um, some of our miners. We have calcium, magnesium, Sulfur, iron, manganese, boron, copper, zinc, and sodium. 
But anyway, um, let's open up this kit and let's take a look and see what's inside. I'm going to prepare my sample. I'm going to um, put it into the sample cup. We're gonna pack it up and get it out. Okay guys, so this is the Yard Mastery um, soil test kit powered by MySoil. You guys, I'm sure you've heard of MySoil. Um, there are other vendors on the market, um, similar easy test kits like this. And then you have the folks that are really into, you know, the, the hardcore, uh, more, I don't want to say more hardcore labs, but there's other labs like um, Waypoint um, where you'll get the cation exchange um, information, the, the CECs. Um, but that is not what this kit is. It's always my opinion that um, you're better to sample than not sample at all. Okay. All right. So let's open up the kit and let's see what's inside. And this is, this is what comes packed. Okay. So we have a... Uh, Registration kit. You can register your kit online. It has information about collecting a good sample. Your depth should be four to six inches, which is what I did. Um, combine the collected soil in a large plastic bag. Um, break up the large chunks. Um, remove any organic material such as root and debris. Um, there is a sample jar. It has water in it. You're not supposed to dump the water out. Okay, then you're going to mail your sample to the lab. You're going to get re your results and you're going to amend the soil. Okay, there is a um, return envelope provided with uh, UPS tracking. Okay, and then what we have here um, is the sample container with our tracking ID on it. Um, it has a water solution in it and a resin tab. There is some um, directions on the back about how to get a representative sample. Um, it's not rocket science. If you're going to only do one kit, you are obviously going to want to collect from different areas of your property. You're going to take the samples, you're going to mix them together in a Ziploc bag, um, crush them up to get a representative sample. Okay. If you have a really large property and you want to buy a couple kits, you could surely do um, your zone separately. I'm just doing um, one sample this year. Okay. All right. So, again, um, I'm going to place my samples into my Ziploc bag. They've been drying out for two days. Okay, I'm going to close the bag just to keep it clean. And I'm going to start crushing it up. Okay, team. So um, I pretty much um, homogenized this pretty well. I pulled out um, the organic material that I was able to See physically, there's another little piece of root here. Okay, or a grass blade. Um, so I, I got some good samples. Um, I've combined them in a plastic bag or uh, you can use a bucket, break up any large chunks. Um, it should be free of any large uh, plant material, roots or other debris. And then I'm gonna use the provided scoop to get a representative level sample. Um, and we're going to Add the scoop into the soil sample jar. Do not, I repeat, do not dump the water out. So let's open up the, uh, let's take our soil sample first, just so we don't have an accident here. So I'm gonna come in here, and again, I've mixed this pretty thoroughly in the bag while the camera was stopped. Okay, so I have a nice level scoop. No uh, immediate reason to wear a glove. It's just dirt. Um, as you can see, this sample container is sealed, so we know that it's uh, hasn't been uh, damaged in shipment, or you know, it left the uh, lab with the proper uh, material in it. There is a barcode here. This barcode matches your registration barcode on the included instructions, and I'll be using this to register my sample. Okay. So I'm going to carefully open this, be very careful not to lose the water or the um, resin pod that's in it. Okay. I'm going to carefully apply my soil sample to the container. I do see one little piece of debris in here. I'm going to pick that out. I have that picked out. That's my one level scoop. I'm going to secure the lid. 
tighten it. Okay, so um, I've registered my sample using the barcode numbers that were on here and also on my registration sheet. I'm going to slip this sample into the sample package. She's sealed up, she's good to go. I'm gonna pop this baby in the mailbox and we're gonna be back in like two seconds and we're gonna review the results because we're gonna flash ahead. Okay guys, all right, we're going to uh, review our uh, soil results. Um, this will only take a couple minutes, so hang in here. Um, we're gonna return to the Yard Mastery website and we're gonna go to the login. You'll notice um, you have your general login, but down a little bit lower on the page, there is a look for your soil results. Looking for your soil results, click here. So we're gonna log in through the My Soil portal. Okay. And here we are, we're at the dashboard. I had one sample that I submitted. If I had others, they would be here. So I have my sample date. Um, sample type was lawn and turf. It was uh, my description combination of property. The soil, um, the status is completed and it has a indicator on here that says there are actions recommended. So to view my report, you're just gonna click the uh, hyperlink here, go to sample results. Okay, I have this zoomed in a little bit so you can't see the entire report. I'm trying to help you guys if you're watching this on a tablet or your phone. Um, the report is broken into a couple sections. We have a um, graphical sample result bar chart with the uh, minimum and maximum range and recommendations for the macros and the micros. Um, that is all being driven by the raw soil data, which is over here to the right. Okay. Um, one thing I'll point out here, um, we'll just go through this in order, is after you go through the sample results, um, there is a learn more button here. Okay. What that does is it gives you some general information on some of these uh, uh, con um, constituents of your, of your sample result and tells you a little bit about um, what they are and what their role is in the lawn. Okay. So we'll return to our results. Um, this um, graphical chart is powered by this raw soil data. So let's take a quick look at that. Um, here are my results. So let's just run through these. pH, I had a um, 5. The optimal range is 5.8 to 7, so it's considered low. Last season, I did a soil savvy test. My um, pH was 5.04, so it essentially hasn't moved. Um, I did do a pH correction last year, I applied a load of lime to my lawn. Um, it was in granular um, stone form. I probably didn't apply enough. I had done some research with some knowledgeable people and they said, you really need to apply a lot to move the needle. So obviously I didn't, I didn't move it at all. So that's something I want to address this season. We'll talk about my, my planned actions at the end. Total nitrogen is 2.41 parts per million. Um, that's considered low. I'm not concerned with that because we'll be bombing the lawn with nitrogen um, in the upcoming weeks. Uh, we'll move on to phosphorus. It's 4.88. My phosphorus last season was 2.29, okay? In New Jersey, you cannot apply phosphorus to your lawn unless you've done a soil test, okay? So I've, um, I have documentation that I'm phosphorus deficient and I can um, legally apply phosphorus. So I will do um, another soil correction this spring, probably with a starter fertilizer. Um, last season, that's what I did. Um, there was a couple um, FERTs I used during the year. Uh, I think the PGF Complete maybe had, it was like a 16.48 possibly. So it had a little bit of FOSS in it. So um, I'm better than I was last year, um, but still deficient. And phosphorus is pretty important in the lawn. You don't want to overdo it um, because there are environmental impacts to um, phosphorus and waterways and things like that. But it is important for the health of the plant. So it's definitely something I want to try to keep working on. Um, but I also need to continue soil testing so I don't get it out of control. Potassium, 24 parts per million. Last year, my potassium was 2.29. Okay. Now, you may recall, I don't know if you guys were watching the channel last year, but I used the Sunnyland Summer Stress Blend last year. So that was really high in potassium, and I had a fantastic response during the summer. Okay. Um, I think my lawn did really well in the in the drought in the heat, although I was irrigating, but it never it, it really didn't suffer um, like it did in years past and and I, I'm thinking maybe some of that had to do with the with the potassium okay so I'm definitely going to be still riding that bus this summer. Um, sulfur and calcium are optimal. Um, 
they were eight last year i was 10 calcium last year i was 80 um, so i got it up to 129 so i'm still in a good range there uh, magnesium is low 23 parts per million last year i was at 12.7 so i'm working on that i'm getting it up i'm using some uh some other products um, that has higher magnesium content and some of my fertilizers that is a macro so i'm headed in the right direction with that although i'm still low so that's something i want to pay attention to you know i'm going to pay a little bit more attention to what kind of ferts i'm using and you know what's the concentration of of the macros in them okay um because i also don't want to apply something that's going to um you know throw me over the top um sodium 31 okay so that's considered high um, the optimal range is um, 0.5 to 30. Uh, last year, my sodium was 14, okay? So that's a big increase. That, I don't know where it's coming from. Um, maybe you do. Leave me a comment. Um, that's something I want to look into. I'd like to learn a little bit more about. I don't know if it was a particular product that I'm using. So now I'm going to pay a little bit more attention to the labels on some of these products. Not that I've never looked at them, but... I want to specifically look for sodium because I want to see is there a high sodium product that I'm using. Um, so anyone who can help me out um, with that in general, um, sodium, if there's a, you know, a product that m is probably responsible for it, please leave me a comment. I'd like to learn more about that and I'll share it with you guys what I find out. Okay, so um, getting into the micros, um, iron, 1.8. Last season, my iron was 7.05, so actually it dropped. And that's very interesting. I did a double dark um, next treatment last year. I think I did one um, iron app to my lawn, so I'm good to go with iron. I'm gonna I'm gonna pound some iron in it, into it this year. In fact, there is a, a double dark granular that Yard Mastery is marketing this year. It's six percent iron. I'm probably gonna throw that down before Memorial Day and maybe before Fourth of July. Um, so I know I'm okay with iron. So if I'm using products that have iron in it, um, I have no concerns there. So that's that. Um, the only other thing I wanted to show you um, here is if you do want to use the Yard Mastery site, shop recommended products. So we have the granular product. So I can click this link, and what it's going to do is it's going to take me to that suggested product to start my season. And this is that 12-12-12 starter fertilizer, which has 3% iron in it. So I'm, you know, I'm going to get going to get out there and start turning my lawn a little darker green. My neighbor's going to be like, hey, man, what's going on? You know, so that's all good. Um, so that's the 12, 12, 12. And, uh, and this is the product that, um, yard mastery is, uh, formulated with Sunnyland. So um, I ordered it. I got it. I ordered it last week. It actually showed up today. It's Monday came in probably five days and I got to give those guys cred. They do get the products out quickly. Okay. So we have that. Um, if you're into the liquid route, you have a backpack sprayer, you have hose end sprayers. Um, here's the recommended, uh, liquid product. So here's the green pop. Okay. So you got that option. Um, I am um, I am a backpack sprayer. Well, I bought a backpack sprayer this season, so I'll be breaking that thing out. But I was using hose end bottles last year, and I may may still use those a little bit here and there. Um, the other thing here is the pH and specialty products. We'll click that. This takes us to the Jonathan Green Magic Cal Plus. There are two versions of this, okay? There's one for low pH that you want to raise, and there's one for high that you want to lower. So depending on your soil report, um, make sure you're purchasing the right one. Now, last year I used lime, okay? And there are people who have done reviews, okay? This is this is 28 bucks a bag, okay? And I need two of them because I think each one probably covers 5,000 square feet and it's recommending that I do two to three treatments for the season. So, you know, it's a little bit of an investment. You probably can go get a Dolomitic lime down at Home Depot, Lowe's. Um, I put the lime down last year. I didn't move the needle, so I think it'll be interesting um, to use a Jonathan Green product. I'm going to give it a shot. I'll do two or three treatments, um, and we'll do another um, soil result, and let's see what happens. You know, if it doesn't move it, I'll go back to the drawing board and try to figure out a better plan for next season. So I'm down with that. I ordered two bags of that for my first treatment. That came over the weekend, so that's already here. So I'm going to be um, busy this weekend. Um doing my um, starter for application, probably throwing down this pH adjustment, and then I'm ready to rock and roll. Okay, so there's a lot of good stuff here on the Yard Mastery site if you care to use it. Um, otherwise, you can still run your soil sample, um, purchase it through Yard Mastery. Um, it's also available um, 
on the website. You can um, order it. They'll send you the kit. You uh, it includes the you guys just you know it's part of this video. You send your send your sample in, get your results, and then just formulate your plan. And you know use use the products that you like to use. Um, use the ones that you're comfortable with. You like going to a certain store. You have a relationship with somebody. Get your products there. That's fine. Um, so that's it, guys. Uh, get out there. Get it done. All right. You got to get out there now because I'm telling you, the lawn is, if you're in the Northeast anyway, if you're in Jersey, okay, we're going to be warming up. We already had a little warm, warm spurt and I got my pre-immersion out. Got to get this first spurt down. I'm going to do my pH correction because it's going to get rained in. It's going to warm up and boom, your lawn's going to start firing and uh, your neighbor's going to be like, dude, what, what did you do? Like, you know, your lawn looks fantastic. You got to get a head start. Don't wait. So many people wait until they start hearing those commercials. You know, oh, it's time to throw down your starter uh, pre-emergent. Well, it's, I mean, I just checked my Yard Mastery app today and I went to Greencast. Um, we already had soil temperatures in the 50 degree range, okay? Crabgrass germinates um, fifth, between 50 and 55. By the time they get those commercials on the radio, I think, I think, and I, you can't quote me, but I think part of it is they're like, it's something people start thinking about when the weather's nice, but really, if you're on the ball, you got to get this stuff down. You got to get it watered in now, okay? Um, if you wait until it's 75 degrees out, stuff's already coming up. You're going to have crabgrass coming out of your ears. Um, I got my stuff down. I'm going to get my fur down this weekend. When my lawn wakes up, it's going to be bathed in some really nice nitrogen. It's going to have some nice yard mastery starter fur on it with the... Um, they have the Bionite in it, which is kind of, it's, it's some of the uh, products similar to uh, Milorganite. You can read about it on the website. Um, it's going to have 3% iron push going, so I'm going to wake up strong. I'm going to wake up strong, so I'm looking forward to it. So, uh, you guys, let me know what uh, how you're making out, and I'll see you next time on Long Journeys. Bring the funk back. back, back.